Hey guys, finally the long-awaited sequel to the original Down the Crop Classic February 12th, 2022 video where I have desktop Java programs on Android, graphical JRE. Uh, now we have OpenGL renderer support working under the PoJav launcher. So today I'm going to be explaining the porting process from JLGL to LWJGL. It really wasn't that complicated. And special thank you again to the Pojab boys for being very smart and getting all of the difficult stuff out of the way for me. I don't have to worry about stubbing the GLFW canvas. I don't have to worry about writing OpenGLES compatibility renderer stuff. The boys already got it figured out for me, so thank you very much to them. There's going to be quite a few acronyms that I'm going through here. We got RT4, which is the RuneTech 4 engine. This is like the game engine that the this current revision of RuneScape runs under. JOGL, these were the original OpenGL bindings, and LWJGL, these are the bindings that we ported to. Inside of LWJGL, there's another thing called GLFW, which creates native windows, just like if you wanted to pop open uh, a window with a close, minimize, maximize button toolbar. You know, native launch a native window on an operating system. That's what GLFW does. If you don't know anything about OpenGL, you should go watch somebody's video on making a Minecraft clone. Really not that complicated. Don't worry about any of math and matrix stuff. This is all things for nerds. Somebody else already figured this out long ago. You just copy their shit and uh, use it. So the original JOGL bindings for the RT4 client, it makes a lot of sense why they did this. The program has two render modes. There's a software render mode, which uses purely AWT, and there is an OpenGL mode, which uses OpenGL. Inside of the RT4 client, when it launches the GL renderer, this is the original semi-unmodified. This is still an updated from the JOGL version that it shipped with to an updated JOGL version. But this is the basic gist of it. When it inits the GL renderer, you know, it gets your capabilities, and then it replaces the canvas that is currently being drawn with AWT to this GL canvas that it can do draw calls to. So unfortunately, these JOGL bindings have been deprecated. They don't work on modern Mac OS. They work on modern Linux and Windows, though, so you can still launch this up uh, in OpenGL on those operating systems, but you can't get this uh, create native window or whatever to work on modern Mac OS. With our new bindings, you can get HD on Mac OS again. So that's an added benefit of this port. So the original way that it worked, yeah, once it inits the OpenGL stuff, uh, it replaces the canvas. Then we have an OpenGL context on this thread and we can just do GL calls to it. One of the nice things about OpenGL only allowing one instance on the thread is that when I was doing the port, uh, the GL calls to the context will actually work on a different canvas if it's on the current thread. So the way that I tested all of my changes because I went file by file, is when I made the GLFW window, I could kind of hijack the context from JOGL's window factory on the AWT canvas to draw on my GLFW canvas, which was the first step to getting everything working. Very cool. Uh, and that was an exciting moment for me. I want to be the context. No, I want to be the context. Oh, shit! So this stuff looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. The original, this is uh, still obfuscated. The RT4 client is a decomp of the original RuneScape client. We don't have uh, fully deobfuscated stuff. Just think about, you know, read the code. Not that difficult to understand even if it's obfuscated right now. But we, in JOGL, we have to get the context of the GL, uh, GL2 context. And then we can do calls to that with uh, GL gen textures or whatever. We don't have to do that. It's GL is already instantiated on the thread. We can just uh, do GL gen textures. We don't have to worry about any of this stuff. It's just syntactically a little bit different where we uh, don't have to call it on this GL2 instance. We can just call it on, uh, on the thread and it'll understand what's happening. There was some slight modifications that we needed to make, uh, even though they both provide bindings to the same stuff. Some of the, some of the functions required slightly different things. Mostly just trailing zeros, stuff like this, where we have this uh, int array, right, uh, of size 1. GL gen textures 1, here's the array, to 0. You don't have to do that in LWJGL. You can see that same sort of thing just happening here, where we 
uh, have texture ID and we're just setting it to GLGen textures. We don't have to do this silly little uh, interray with these indexes. So most of it was just changing little stuff like that where uh, syntactically it was a little bit different. There is some stuff that I needed to wrap inside of byte buffers like down here. Also some stuff wanted pointers, so uh, you have to make a little helper function to get the memory address of the buffer. But really most of that just sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. Not that, not that tough, guys. Uh, it, I will say that it, it takes a lot more than 20 minutes. This guy, <laughs> there's this guy on rune server but my dude says this takes 20 minutes tops there's a lot of fucking calls to open gl my dude you, it takes a little bit longer than 20 20 minutes it took me about two days of refactoring to get everything working correctly largely it was just renaming stuff from calling on the instance like gl gl clear instead just calling it on the thread with uh, gl 11 uh, gl clear or importing so that we can just call gl clear directly and then those little byte buffer wrappers and uh, getting pointers and stuff. That... Then once we had all of the JOGL stuff out, we launched it up on Android for the first time. Very important moment, cool stuff. And now we'll briefly go over the controls. So one of the main reasons why this using the native canvas made a lot of sense is that the mouse and keyboard listeners are attached to the AWT canvas. Because of that, Jagex could use the exact same mouse and keyboard listeners for the standard detail and high detail versions. But for me, since I launched a new GLFW window, I needed to write a, I needed to write some wrapper stuff to turn the GLFW mouse and keyboard events into AWT wrapped mouse and keyboard events so that they would work properly with uh, all of the old stuff. I'll quickly show that mapping stuff here with some very messy code. Uh, largely, it was just things like GLFW key events. It'll get sent as like if you're if you're typing the exclamation mark key, it'll get sent as shift plus one instead of an exclamation mark key, you know, if that makes sense to you. Uh, just different ways of handling stuff. So you need to write some maps to get those key events to work properly, and then we just wrap those key events and send them to the keyboard instance, and everything is happy with the way that it works. We do the same thing for the mouse instances. Every time that the mouse cursor moves on the window, we just uh, trigger AWT mouse events. If I really cared, I would not have this inside of the uh, init LWJGL. We'd have this in a in another class, but hey, it works. Going file by file and replacing the calls from JOGL to LWJGL, we could see if we broke anything by just doing one file at a time. Uh, here are some funny screenshots. This is kind of cool. This is when you're actually not drawing any textures. These are just the base, basic colors of everything. Kind of looks like uh, OSRS HD has that smoothness to it, you know? Uh, these are all the textures from the login screen, actually. You can see, like, there's the HD button. There's the SD button. So there's still some little issues with it. Um, I'm clearing the texture cache every single frame to avoid texture corruption. Your phone's really fast. It's okay, guys. Uh, this is a bad practice, but... It works. Uh, the water shader doesn't work. Uh, for some reason, GL draw pixels does not work correctly in my implementation here. Probably just something simple screwed up that I can't figure out. The world map doesn't work correctly on desktop or Android, and it's because of this GL draw pixels. Also, in the original video, I talk about porting the uh, MIDI listener to get the audio working. Really, I was on the right track with the open AL stuff. I, I talk about it like squealing here. I get it to I get it to make some funny, funny noises, not the right funny noises, but funny noises. Uh, I was very, 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 very close to getting the audio working. It does work, but the buffer lags behind the actual game uh, because I'm sampling at the wrong speed or some some funny stuff like that. Somebody that is smarter than me with OpenAL, hey, go and go and fix this. The number one problem with it is that I'm trying to adapt the way that it used to work, that it checked how much free space was inside of the uh, data line that was streaming into a rotating ring buffer with fixed sample sizes. Hey, somebody that's really smart, go figure this out for me, okay? It's, it's really close to working, really, 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 really close to working. So somebody go figure this out. But that's it for now. Hey, might as well might as well sound like you're smart when all of this stuff is still fresh in your mind. 
took me about a week to get all of this stuff ported over. Then the actual Android app stuff, yeah, we did some UI tweaks and uh, got it all working, but that's... Porting the OpenGL stuff makes you sound a lot smarter than talking about creating a UI in Android Studio. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, go download this app. It's pretty freaking cool. Peace.